Hey guys, Max here. Today we're going to be talking about features present and to come in the future with regards to bombs with the F-18C Hornet. I'll be diving into quite a bit of detail to talk about how the bombs work and what different modes there are. I think it's important to understand how these actually function so you can better employ them in the battlefield scenario within DCS. But before we get started guys, I quickly just wanted to say thank you to everyone out there for the awesome support in the past videos. This really means a lot as I really enjoy sharing DCS content and the things that I love with everyone out there. And to know it's helping some people, it really means a lot. So I've committed to uploading once a week every Sunday in Australian time. And if you have any other suggestions or video on request, I'll check out all the comments you put below. And we can even get up to two or three videos a week. Really looking forward to it and stay tuned for more content. Now let's quickly talk about theory. DCS is a realistic simulator for flying aircraft, but also does a great job at employing weapons. Unfortunately, one aspect of the Hornet that isn't covered too well are the settings for general purpose bombs. General purpose bombs for the Hornet consists of the Mark 80 series, which is including the 500 pound Mark 82 bomb, a 1000 pound Mark 83, and a 2000 pound Mark 84 bomb. It's important to know that these weights are of the entire bomb and the actual explosive content for each one is approximately 50%. Therefore, a Mark 84 is actually filled with approximately 1,000 pounds of explosive. We can modify some of these bombs to create high drag munitions through the use of either a Mark 15 Snake Eye tail fin assembly, which expands after release and creates a high drag profile in the weapon, or the Mark 82 Air, which uses a shoot system that expands after release which also adds drag, but we won't cover that. The important thing to know is that these are retarded bombs and are best for low level release to avoid frag damage on your own or your wingman's aircraft. To quickly attempt to future proof this video, nose and tail kit conversions can be added to these basic unguided bombs, which would introduce the 30 series and 10 series bombs, where the 30s are GPS or INS guided and the 10s being laser guided. You might have seen this in the A-10 or Harrier and other aircraft. These bombs utilize a nose or tail kit with fins to act as little flaperons that steer the bomb closer to the target and can have an accuracy of up to 5 feet. Taking a closer look at one of the bombs, there are a couple components. The nose mechanical fuse, charging well, explosive, tail fuse and fin assembly. There are advantages and disadvantages of placing the fuse in certain positions. Starting with the nose, this is good for instantaneous fusing on impact and used to be the most common fuse location. Where the tail fuse improves on the nose is the probability of a dud bomb. There is a factor of probability that a nose fuse bomb may become dud if the fuse breaks apart on impact. The nose and tail fuse, or NT as seen in a Hornet, allows for even more reliability in the case one breaks, however this becomes more expensive. For this reason we typically use tail fused bombs as this allows us to add sensors such as proximity or variable time sensors to the nose utilizing what's called a DSU-33 unit. This unit is fitted in the nose well and it utilizes a radar to gauge distance to impact and it is fixed to 20 feet above impact. This will give us what's called an air burst effect which we'll talk about later. From my rough estimate the DCS F-18 General purpose bombs utilize a M904 nose fuse for pretty much every single bomb. Now you might be asking as to why we even need a delay or proximity fuse setting when releasing bombs. Without diving into too much detail in weaponeering, there are five main damage mechanisms from a bomb. We've got blast, fragmentation or frag, cratering, penetration and incendiary effects. Any given target is usually most vulnerable to one type of damage mechanism. So we'll be looking at three of these for bombs. The main one is a blast and it's caused by the tremendous dynamic overpressure generated by the complete or high order detonation of a bomb. Approximately half the total energy at a high order will be used to expand the bomb casing up to anywhere between one to one and a half times prior to fragmentation. And this gives velocity to those fragments. The remainder of energy is then expended into compression of air and it's responsible for the blast or shockwave effect that is mostly associated with bombs. An instantaneous fuse will produce the largest surface burst, however if targeting buildings, a delayed fuse will confine the blast within the target building or bunker structure and will affect maximum damage, collapsing walls and roofs. 
The second one is fragmentation, known as frag, is the breakup of a weapon casing upon detonation, which is commonly heard in handheld explosives such as a frag grenade. Fragments of general purpose bombs can reach velocities up to 9,000 feet per second and becomes highly effective against soft targets such as infantry, light vehicles and radar installations as this will basically create holes through all of those targets and make them inoperable. By utilizing a proximity fuse or even an instantaneous fuse, the effects of frag will be increased and has a far more significant range than the actual blast of the explosion, which is why you always see that break X on the HUD when trying to release bombs low level. Incendiary is the last one I'm going to talk about and it's the intense localized heat from the reaction of high order or the actual explosion phase. Surprisingly this is usually the least damaging aspect as it has a very small radius with the explosion, but due to the localized energy it becomes very significant when targeting adjacent combustible material. You might be feeling a little bit overloaded with all of this information and you might be asking which fuse setting do I need when? Now this part is relatively simple, remembering whichever setting you use will still cause damage, but we're going to be talking how to create maximum effect with the size of bomb we're using. So in order to do that, we're going to apply three concepts basically. Air Burst. This is achieved through proximity fuse known as VT or variable time in the Hornet. This causes greatest damage on soft targets as it allows for greatest amount of frag damage. This is also because the incident wave on impact meets with the reflected wave to create a path of triple point where those two waves meet. This spreads more frag faster and further through the air. We use this method against infantry whether on surface or in foxholes, light vehicles or radar installations. The second concept is surface blast, achieved through instantaneous fuse and is best used against unitary targets such as a tank, artillery and air defense units. And the last one is cratering, or known as delayed fuse in the Hornet. This method is your go-to for buildings, structures, roads, and especially airfields. The bomb will penetrate almost all surfaces due to the mass and velocity on impact and will bury itself into runways. After the set delay on the fuse, high order occurs localizing the blast within the structure of the building or if impacting the ground will shock and create a deep crater. This makes it hard to repair in the case of runways, and buildings are far more vulnerable to explosions and blasts from within, thus always leading to pretty much a collapse of that building. Okay, with all the theory out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the airplane and talk about these from a piloting perspective. Go ahead and set one of your DDIs to the stores page and we can begin setting up our weapons. We can see we've got 82s and 83s, and if you remember the 82 is our 500 pound bomb and the 83 is our 1000 pound bomb. On the left side we've got all of our settings for our weapon particularly and a key thing to remember here is some of the settings are actually set up prior to the flight by the weaponeers or your armament engineers and some of them can actually be modified such as the electric fuse. For mode this is how the bomb is actually going to be released. There are other great videos on YouTube about how to actually do this. For now we're going to be using CCIP which gives us a calculated impact point. M fuse stands for mechanical fuse which is either the off, nose, tail, or nose and tail. Now this is one of those settings that is done by the engineers prior to flight, and it will be confirmed by your mission briefing. We know so far in DCS we only have nose fuses, so we'll head, go ahead and select that. E-fuse stands for your electronic fuse. And in here we have modes such as our variable time, instant, delay one, and delay two. The variable time is usually set by whatever unit is at the front of the weapon, such as the DSU-33 which has that 20 feet indication for fusing. Instant will be, or instantaneous, instantaneous mode will be fusing on impact. Delay 1 will be setting the delay set on the actual fuse unit as number 1, and delay 2 will use number 2. So these are all predetermined before flight and will also be within the mission briefing. At the moment we still can't change any of those, so we can go ahead and keep it on instant. Drag, this is depending on your bomb. We know 82 Bravo is our free fall bomb, so we'll go ahead and press free fall. 
If we had the snake eye, then we would use the ret, which stands for retarded bomb. Under program one, we now see a complete overview of all of our settings, and this is our final chance to check this. Once we're happy with that, we can go ahead and roll in towards our target and come in for our attack. So talking more on the topic of settings for our weapons, we have our release settings that we can also set up, which will be by hitting the UFC push button on the right side. Here, we get prompted with either quantity or multiple. If we wanted to release two bombs at the exact same time, we'd put a quantity of two in and a multiple of two. Once again, we can check this right here on our summary. Now, if we wanted to release two bombs, but only have one go off at a time, and maybe the second one falls shortly afterwards, we need to set an interval. At the moment, it's set to one foot, so there will be a very, very, very small ripple. Let's go ahead and set this to 150 feet. Check the summary, make sure we've entered all correctly. Looks good. There really isn't much more to entering in. Just remember quantity is how many total will be coming off. So if we wanted to get rid of all four of our 82s. So if we had eight 82s to get rid of, we'd put in eight on the quantity. And then if we want to get rid of two at a time, we'd put two on the multiple. That would give us a total of four releases. So the final tip I have for everyone out there is one that I've personally been using the most in the Hornet when it comes to targeting and finding our targets. Right now the profile is set up to CCIP release mode, but that doesn't mean we can't use any of the auto features that helps us find our target. First thing we'll need to do is bring up the HSI. On the HSI we want to make sure the waypoint is boxed, and this will now give us an indication to waypoint. We have 6 miles away and rolling out on heading now. I'm trying to look for the targets but I'm having a hard time trying to find them. Let's go ahead, look at the HSI and below the bottom arrow we have WPDSG which is waypoint designate. Click that and all of a sudden our HUD looks like a auto release. We now have auto on the HUD and even a Q. I've used a little box and I can now see my targets. When you're ready to engage your targets in CCIP mode, use the undesignate button or the nozzle steering sensitivity button to undesignate the target and switch to CCIP mode. You can now roll in the target as per normal. Releasing, about to get the brake X and rolling away. Splash. Pretty much concludes the video for today. I hope you've gotten something out of it and even though it's quite a lengthy video for quite simple steps in terms of pushing buttons on the stores page, if you're anything like me, I really enjoyed learning about all the modes and actually how the fusing works within the bombs. So if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to my channel and make sure notifications are on. Leave a like and if you have any further questions, please post in the comments below. I'll make sure to check every single one. Cheers.